I decided before showing you some caveats of value types, I wanted to revisit this cow and utter example and just kind of demonstrate, show some things of, to notice as far as value types and references types goes. You can see right now I have both of them set up as a class. So both cow and utter are reference types. Let's draw our memory again here, and this will be the stack, and the heap will be out here. And down here in main, I am going to instantiate a cow. So cow, Betsy gets new cow. And what's going to happen as far as the, what, what am I going to draw over here? You have to pause the video, draw it out yourself, run through this code, think about it before you actually see how I do it. Okay, so when we create a cow, since it is a reference type, new will allocate the cow out on the heap. And in process, in the process of doing so, I showed previously how this code is actually slammed into a cow constructor. But in the process of creating our cow instance, this code will execute, thus creating an utter. And utter is a reference type as well, so then we will have to go out on the heap for that too. So let's just demonstrate that. New cow. All right, let's go out here and let's put the cow here. Right, there's uh, the num stakes portion of the cow will list first, and then the utter reference will be down here. So this will be ud, short for utter. And in the process of doing that, we have the new utter. So again, new. Let's go out on the heap, find some room out here that we can put an utter. It looks like this is a good location right here. And it has a single float in it called ounces of milk. So ounces of milk again moo backwards how convenient All right but this new operation returns the address which we further assign to the other reference so you can think of the reference inside of the cow pointing towards the other instance and then all that returns back down to main and this new returns its address which we further assign to Betsy Betsy being a reference on the stack so here's Betsy, All right, Betsy, and this is referencing this object out on the heap. Very cool, very cool. Well, what if I think of it for for a minute? What if I come here and I change this to a struct? All right, how is that going to change the layout of what occurs here? Pause the video, work it through. Okay, I'm going. I'm just going to start over. All right, and uh, here's our memory and here's our stack and here's our heap and now that I say struct utter, well we're not to utter, let's do the cow first. So again cow is still a class reference type so new goes out to the heap and says let's put a cow right here this time. Alright and then what is a cow made of? It's made of of num stakes right there and, and then instead of doing a reference here that's going to point to some other object down on the heap, another utter object. Instead, the utter is embedded directly right here. This is the utter portion of the cow, right? Because utter is now a value type. It is stored directly as is. We don't reference it at all. And utter is made up of one float, which is ounces of milk. So I'm going to say ud here for utter, and then this is ounces of milk right there. If I stored a value here, the default value is zero, so I'll just put a zero there, but if I actually wrote code to store a value there, it would go directly in our cow instance and not out to an utter instance somewhere else out on the heap. So there you go, there's our big difference there by saying struct here and changing our utter to a value type. All right? Anyway, the again, this this new returns, what, 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 is, what does this new mean? Do you remember what the value types? What is, this new mean? It simply means zero everything out. So I don't technically need this new right oh, where are you? I don't need this new anymore because the other object that is the other object. I don't need to new it to zero it out because when I instantiate the cow, this cow instance, the runtime will automatically zero out everything for us. So I don't need to do that new anymore. It's not necessary. The only reason I had the new in there before was to allocate another instance on the heap. But it's not stored on the heap. It's stored as an embedded piece of the cow. Anyway, uh, the reference to this is returned. And Betsy again is a reference on the stack. So that's Betsy right there and referencing this cow. All right now how... 
how are things going to change if I, if I say, well, let's make this a struct, and then let's make this a class? All right? Pause the video and work through it before I do it for you. Okay, let's um, go here, do our memory again. Here's the stack on the left and the heap on the right. And, and now cow is a struct, right? It's a value type. So when I say Betsy, I'm literally saying this is Betsy. And you notice I drew it a little bit bigger because num stakes is going to be right here. And then utter, this is a reference now. I changed this back to a class, so this is a reference. Right? And since we don't new it up or anything, it's just going to be null. So we better put a new in there to go get some memory out on the heap. So new, utter, like so. And then here we go. Let's let's be the new operator. Go out here and here's room for an utter. Right? An utter is made of one float, which is called ounces of milk. And so this utter portion of our cow references this utter object out on the heap. Alright, so here's our cow object. Betsy, this literally is the cow. Alright, um, and then we'd have to reference like that. Now, a little caveat here, I don't think this code will actually build the way I've done this, if I remember right. Yeah, that's right. That's right, I remember that. I'm going to show why this doesn't actually work in uh, in a future video. I'll show you why this doesn't actually work. But if it did work, this is, this is the setup we would end up with. Alright, now, what if I go here and... Um, what if I go here and I say, well, struct. Let's change both of them. Both of them will be a value type. Okay, how's that? that going to change things? Let's pause the video, think about that, and come back. First of all, I'm going to, uh, since, since utter is a struct, when I say little case utter here, that is the object. All right, so again, the, oops, the new is not necessary, and you can see it in work anyway and I'll show why that is in a future video but now the utter that is the object and I no longer need to say new cow when I say cow Betsy that is the object and it's sitting on the stack let me demonstrate here here's the memory again here's the stack here is the heap and we say cow Betsy well how big is Betsy Betsy it has an int and then it has an utter and the size of an utter is a float so here we go here's Betsy all right, we'll put num stakes right here, and the utter portion will be right here, but the other utter portion is the ounces of milk. And and there you go, everything, whoops, everything is on the stack. Nothing goes out on the heap because they are both now value types defined as such. Let's do one other little example, probably a little weird, but we'll uh, prove something nonetheless. Uh, in computer science, it's typical to have these things called linked lists. And inside of linked lists, you make these things called nodes. And don't worry about what a node is if you don't know what that means. It doesn't really matter. But essentially, a node has to keep track of the node after it. So I'll say next, like this. I've made a class called node, and then a node next, and then we store, I don't know, we can, maybe we make a linked list that can only store ints. So the int in this this node. Alright, so now I can do something kind of interesting here. I can say node first gets new node, and I can say first dot next. If it's public, I can do this. Public. Alright, first dot next gets a new node, like so. And then I can say first dot next dot next gets new node. I hope that's not too confusing. Let's illustrate what's going on here. Here is our stack. Here is our heap. And here's the little divider line. Um, I'm going to execute. Hit F11. F11 first gets new node. Alright, let's go create a new node. We can be the new operator. And here's room for a node. Alright, it has a reference to another node. Alright, I'll call this next here. And then it has the int in this node. The int in this node. That's what that means. The int in this node. All right, and it will default to zero since I'm not assigning it. And then that reference is returned and assigned to first. So first is a reference sitting on the stack. There's first, like so. And it is referencing this first node that we've created. And now I say first dot next. 
gets new node. Well, let's do the new node thing again. Here, we'll put it. No, we'll put it right here. Here's another node. All right, and here is the int in this node. It'll be zero as well. And then we return that value from new. This new returns that address, and we assign it to first dot next. So we go to first dot. The dot means dereference next. Well, here's the next. So this will point to there or reference that. Right, and that all happens when I hit F11 here. Well now, I'm going to say first dot next dot next gets new node. Let's again, let's do the new node per, per new <laughs> new node portion first. All right, this is the int in this node. Again, it defaults to zero, but but now we say first dot next dot next. Well, first dot next dot next this guy gets the address of this thing. So this one's going to reference down here this node like so. And so you can see we've kind of made this link list, this linked list. It's a bunch of chain links, if you would. They're linked together as we build that. I'm going to hit F11 and make it, make it actually happen. There you go. Well, that's fine and dandy with references, but what if I come up here and I say uh, struct. Let's turn it into a value type. How does that change things. All right, let's, well, you see we got the squiggly line. Now we're going to have a problem. I'm going to shift F5, stop the debugger, let until I sense think for a minute. And, um, oh, okay. I guess that line meant you didn't edit, but it couldn't change it without restarting. Let's build this first. Control Shift B. <gasps> Ooh, struct member node dot next of type node causes a cycle in the struct layout. What does that mean? I'll tell you what that means. When we say struct node, we're saying this node is defined to to create an instance of the node, you have to put a node in it. Right? It is no, is no longer a four byte reference that references some other object somewhere else and some other object somewhere else and some other object somewhere else. No, you need to take this node and put it inside the node, which means you have to take this node and put it inside the node, which means and you know, on and on forever. We can't define a node in terms of a node. Because it, like it's cyclic, it's cycle, it's infinite. It's like a node is made of a node, which is made of a node, which is made of a node, which is what? What's a node? We never end, right? It recurses forever. Is another way of saying it. It just won't stop. So there you go. Another kind of crazy example, but hopefully that that drove that home. If I was actually trying to define this myself, just draw it. Here, here's a node type, but a node type is going to be made up of a node type, which is going to be made up of a node type, which is going to be made up of a node type. And do you remember those dolls I think you can get in in uh, markets You can where you unscrew them and you kind of pull them apart like onions? Anyway, that's the idea. There you go. Value types. Um, I cannot define a value type in terms of itself. That makes no sense.